over the past few years, we have worked with over 1,700 course creators. And when you work with that many people, you start to see a lot of mistakes. You start to see things that they're doing that you were unaware of, or you start to see common patterns they're doing that cause them to have funnels that don't work or webinars that don't work or lower show up rates or webinars or launches that are plateaued or declining or, or never took off in the first place. And what we've realized is that there are five main mistakes that most people make inside their funnels that cause them to not have a great launch, cause them to not hit the numbers, or cause their funnel to fall apart. And what I wanted to do is reveal what these five mistakes are so that you can stop doing them and hopefully start to see more results inside of every funnel you put out. So if that's interesting to you, well, keep on listening. Hi, I'm Brandon Lucero, and you are about to experience the new way to thrive in business, entrepreneurship, and life by leaning into who you are, what you love, and standing up for what you want to create. Get ready, because this is where we go against the grain, say no to outdated society norms, and we say yes to change in order to create a happier, more fulfilled world. Welcome to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Today, it's been a while, but today we're going to talk about messaging related stuff. Um, I don't know why we haven't talked about it. We just had a lot of guests come on the podcast lately and, and um, it's been a lot of fun to do that. And I keep flip-flopping between loving to do interviews and talk messaging and, and life and, and all that stuff. So Today, I've, I figured it's been a while since we've done a messaging related episode. Let's talk about messaging. And this actually comes from a lot of the sales calls we've been doing. So as many of you know, we've been um, incorporating a more evergreen open enrollment um, process for our NGM plus our mentorship program. And with that, we do a lot of sales calls every week. And we just learn a lot about what's going on. What are people dealing with? And how do we fix it? And one of the biggest issues that's been coming up lately is people have been talking about launches. So they said that their launches are plateaued. They've talked about how their launches are declining, or they've been talking about how their launches just never took off in the first place. And that can be incredibly frustrating. It could be, well, I guess frustrating is the best word. You just want to like slam your head against the wall because you're just like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm doing everything everyone tells me to do. And... I'm following all the frameworks, I'm doing everything and it's just not taking off. And especially if you had launches that were working and then all of a sudden aren't, there's a lot going on there too. And so what I wanted to dive into today was talk about some of the common mistakes that people are making that cause their launches to plateau, to decline. And the intention is, is to really show you uh, what to stop doing in order to get results. And I tell my students all the time, I tell them, Everyone thinks that you have to add value by delivering information. Everyone thinks you need to teach and teach and teach and give your best stuff away for free in order to build a business online. And, you know, educational content's great and we do need it. The problem is, is you risk overwhelming people. You risk um, tricking people into thinking they have everything they need. But the biggest thing that I think most people overlook is that when you just focus on teaching all the time, the underlying root issue of what's going on is you communicate from your awareness level instead of your audiences. This probably is the number one messaging mistake that I see with, with students all the time with their copy, with their ads, with their webinars and content is you just speak so much from your awareness level. And unfortunately, what I find, it's not true all the time, but usually what I find is that the people that are more educated on their space or their niche or their skills, meaning they have more degrees, more certifications, the other person are way more likely to speak from their awareness level instead of their audiences. And for me, everything that I've learned from messaging has been through firsthand experience, just intuition, um, just, I, you know, a lot of what I've created is just looked at like, how did this book make me feel? Or how did this ad make me feel? And then I look back and reread, okay, I was here and then it got me here. How did they do that? What happened in my brain? Why did that work? What? And I start to see communication patterns all over the place. Even when my wife talks to me or my kids talk to me, or I try different things out with my kids, it's been trial and error. And the beautiful part about that is like when we teach from experience, we actually understand 
um, the, the, the pain points, the thoughts, the mistakes, the actions that people are doing, the real life stuff. And it allows us to speak a little bit deeper, become more relevant to our audience. Whereas when we are so highly educated in our topic, we, you know, we can still help a lot of people for sure. But the problem is, is that we like to t almost talk or teach or communicate from a text, like a, like, like a textbook. And that's just not relevant to the audience. And although that's not the case all the time, if you do have a ton of degrees on what you're going through or what you're teaching, not going through, but what you're teaching or what you do, you want to make sure to understand the audience of who you want to attract. What are their pains? What are their problems? Like specific things. And what are they doing that caused it? What are they doing to try to fix it? What are they doing that doesn't work that you know? What are the industry norms that cause them to do that? What are the beliefs they have? Which, by the way, have all those things I just mentioned have nothing to do with how to fix the actual problem. It's not anything to do with the information and the steps and, and all of that stuff. So what I wanted to do is, is hop into five common mistakes that people make when it comes to launch messaging. And so... Uh, we'll readdress this awareness issue when we get towards the end again, because that will be number five, I think. I think it's number five. But again, the point of what I was saying is I want you to even just look at this episode of what I'm about to drop on you and look at what I'm doing. Notice I'm not going to be teaching you what to do or how to do something. I'm actually going to focus more on what not to do. And it's still an educational piece. It's still going to be highly value-adding. It's still going to um, help you in a lot of different ways. But it doesn't follow the traditional method of add value, give your best stuff away for free, teach, 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 more information, more information. I'm going to create a podcast episode today on what not to do. And I would argue sometimes teaching people what not to do is almost, if not more important than what to do. And I always use this example. If you've been in my ecosystem for a while, you probably heard me say, tell this story, but most people don't know, or maybe you do now, but I used to be a cross country and, and track runner all through high school. Um, finished 10th in the state of California in, in cross country, got a full ride to run at UC Irvine. And I think my best mile time was like 420 or something like that. And my best two mile time was like 920 or, you know, something like that. Best five mile times like 1440 or sorry, three mile time, 1445. So it's pretty decent, you know, um, enough to, uh, decent enough to get a, a full ride division one NCAA scholarship. Now, most people in when you start in like, especially as freshmen or sophomores in high school, the goal is to break a five minute mile. Like that's the thing. Like if you can do that, like you're, you're good. Like even, uh, at least at my school, it wasn't good enough to get you on varsity, but a lot of schools, it, it would be good enough to get you on the varsity team. And, and the five mile minute thing is kind of this big, big thing, right? It's like what everyone kind of aims for strides for. There are a lot of things that you can do to help you achieve that five minute mile. Well, when I first ran in freshman year, of high school, I didn't want, I didn't want to run. I got cut from the baseball team and I didn't want to run. My parents made me run. I was always good in the PE classes and I junior high had won this race, the school wide half mile race. My parents made me do it, but I didn't know anything about it. So my parents just went to like, I don't know, some like big five or something like that and bought me these giant marathoner shoes, these huge honkers of a shoe. And that's what I trained in. And that's what I ran, ran in. And that's what I raced in. And my very first time was like 5.15. And then a lot of races, I just couldn't break the five minute. And it was just like 5.10, 5.05, 5.10, 5.15, 5.05. And then I just had a breakthrough race, broke the five minute mile. And then by the end of the season, I had won league for um, Frosh Soft, freshman and sophomore, and ran a 4.51 in these giant trainers. And I didn't realize it at the time but there are shoes called spikes and these are shoes that are like very lightweight. They don't offer a lot of support. You're not supposed to train in them, but you're supposed to race in them. And they have literally like little spikes on the bottom, you know, on the, the, the front of your, your shoe. And they will cut off like 10 minutes of 10 or 10 minutes, 10 seconds of your time. I didn't know that. So I had finished one league, ran 451 as a freshman. And I was just like, Oh my God, I can't believe I ran 451. My coach comes up to me and goes, why were you wearing trainers? And I said, what do you mean? What am I supposed to wear? He goes, spikes. Did we not tell you that? I'm like, no, I have no idea what spikes even are. And he's like, you ran 451 wearing trainers? I'm like, yeah. And had I known, I could have run 441, 445, something like that as a freshman, which is just, that would have been unbelievable. And 
that was one of my first lessons in, in the value of teaching people what not to do. And if I was coaching someone and I, they were like, Brandon, I'm at that, that mark that you were at. I'm at 505, 510, 515. I just can't break the five minute mile. I could look at them and go like, all right, let's get you on a training plan. Let's get you on a diet plan. Let's get you, um, like go over your stretches. Let's go do some speed work. Like let's put a plan together. And that's going to take a lot of work and effort. But if I look down and they're wearing trainers and I say, bro, just stop wearing trainers, like put some spikes on, just stop doing that thing. They could get the result they wanted without having to do all the other stuff. And that's the beauty in revealing mistakes and doing this in your launches is you get to add value into someone's life without teaching them what to do, which raises their awareness. Like for me, like my, when my coach told me, stop doing that, it raised my awareness. Oh my gosh, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to do this. I didn't know there were other things. You raised my awareness and made me aware of things I wasn't aware of before. And that is one of the most powerful ways to be able to add value. And that's what this whole episode is, is that I want you to pay attention to this episode and look at like, how is branding, Brandon adding value to me, to his audience without teaching them what to do. And that's kind of the goal of today's episode. So what I want to do is we're going to run you through five messaging mistakes that people do inside of funnels and launches, but it could even be evergreen funnels that really hurt their results. So the first mistake we want to avoid, and I see this all the time, especially with our students, is we don't need to reconvince someone on the opt-in page. And I see this all the time. So one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they, they create these opt-in pages and they act as if the opt-in page is what's going to convince someone to opt-in. And I get it. It makes sense, right? Like it makes sense that you're like, okay, they're going to opt-in here. I need to convince them to opt-in, but you don't. Stop trying to convince people to opt in on an opt-in page. And so what happens is when people do this, they try to convince you to opt in on the opt-in page. The, the copy just gets so long, so generalized. It's just packed with stuff all the time. And what we fail to remember, what most people fail to remember is that no one just magically lands on your opt-in page. People aren't just like scrolling the internet and then all of a sudden your opt-in page appears on their computer and then they're like, hmm, what's this about? Let me opt in. Let me check it out. Let me, or let me leave. No, people are clicking on an ad. They're reading the copy in the ad. They're looking at the ad headline. They're listening to the video ad that you may have, or they're looking at the image ad, or they're on an email. So they see an email uh, and then whatever you said on the email, convince them to click over. Or maybe it's a social media post or something. But what you have to realize is that when people land on your opt-in page, something you said before they landed on the opt-in page got them to click over on the opt-in page. So stop trying to reconvince them to opt-in. Just tell them the exact same thing that you said on the step before. So what I tell people is like sometimes with our ads, when we can't get our ads to work, one of the best things that we can do it's just take the same copy from the ad or the same headline on the ad and just put it on the opt-in page. Keep it super simple. So for me, whatever the main headline is, and so for me, usually the name of my webinar or my workshop or whatever it is, is the headline on my ad. And I'll tell them what it is. I'll say free workshop, master your messaging or free workshop, learn how to create a seven figure webinar, right? The opt-in page just says the same thing right at the top, bam, free webinar learn how to create a seven figure webinar or bam, free workshop or three day live event, master your messaging, learn how to create the most engaging content you've ever created, right? Whatever the headline is on my, uh, my webinar. So whatever my webinar title is, I'm going to use that to craft the headline of the ad, which is going to be the headline on the opt-in page, which then is going to be the headline of the email and be thank you for registering for blah, 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 blah they're, that they're going to get right when they opt in the thank you page. You're now registered for the free workshop how to, how to master your messaging, create the most engaging content ever, or free congratulations. You're now registered for the free workshop on how to create a seven figure webinar. Just keep it the same. And so what I see is a lot of times people create this ad and it's, it's like how to create, you know, free workshop, how to create a seven figure webinars. That's the headline of the ad and the copy will have something like the list method post or, or whatever in it. And then people click and it's like, they try to reconvince you all over again. So, you know, the opt-in page will say something like, are you struggling with your webinars? Are you like frustrated because your conversion rate's not really hitting um, and your show up rate is going down? Well, good news is we have a free workshop. And it's like, 
what are you doing? Stop. <laughs> they don't need to be reconvinced. Just they need to be reassured that they've landed on the right spot. And what you're doing is not reassuring them. And what I mean by that is if let's just say I'm reading an ad, I'm scrolling Facebook and I read an ad and it says free workshop, how to create a seven figure webinar. I'm like, wow, that's okay. That's caught my interest. And I go to the copy and the copy says, look, in the last six months, have your webinars show up rates decline, the conversion rates declining, you're plateaued. You're not really sure what to do. And your ad costs have gone up. There are three reasons why that's happening. Uh, reason number one is you're teaching too much. Reason number two is you've done the same topic for at least a year. And top, reason number three is blah, blah, blah. And I look at that and I go like, wow, I am experiencing those problems and I am making those mistakes. All right, great. I'm going to click. And then all of a sudden I click over to that opt-in page. I don't need to be reconvinced. I need to be reassured that I'm on the right thing because I'm already sold. I'm already going to opt in. And so if that page just said free workshop, how to craft a seven figure webinar, here's the dates, here's the details. I'm like, yeah, cool. I'm on the right place. Yeah, this is it. And then be beneath the fold, if you want to insert some, some like social proof and bullet points and things like that, like go for it. That's fine. But the last thing you want is, is when someone reads an ad like that and has that experience and they click over, the last thing you want is an opt-in page that says like, are you struggling with your webinars? Are you really frustrated because nothing is selling? It's like, idiot, I've already, yes, I've already read this. I already read the copy. I already read the ad. I already read the email. Just reassure me that I'm in the right place. And so what starts to happen is your messaging gets all, all over the place. All, it's just, it's convoluted. It's generalized. It's just everywhere because now you're every, you feel like you have to reconvince someone every step of the way. And you think that it's going to happen through the copy of the opt-in page. And so that's the number one mistake is stop trying to reconvince someone when they land on your opt-in page. Just reassure them that they're in the right spot, especially above the fold. And then beneath the fold, underneath the fold, if you want to add some other things like bullet points of what they're going to get, problems that are going to end, social proof, stuff like that, go for it. There's no problem doing that. You just don't want it at the top. And so that's the number one mistake is people trying to reconvince someone once they land on the opt-in page. Problem number two is this. Uh, a lot of people will create launches or they'll create funnels or they'll create webinars with big generalized pro promises. And so what starts to happen is you have these big generalized topics that aren't usually relevant to the audience. And that used to work but now the market's so oversaturated. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Let's say you're a coach and you help people with process their trauma, okay? And what most people will do is they'll create this big overarching issue, problem. And it may say something like, learn how to overcome your past childhood trauma. And that's great and dandy, and that could be a great topic if you have a great organic audience, but for most of us, we don't. We don't have hundreds of thousands of organic followers and, and all of that stuff. And that would be great a great topic when there wasn't a lot of competition. So you have to understand most people talk in generalizations, which means that now that you have more competitors, you're going to have more people using generalized topics, which means you're going to blend in with a bigger amount of people, right? So now you have all these people saying things like how to heal childhood trauma, how to heal childhood trauma, how to heal childhood trauma. And that's great if you're the only one saying it. And the audience's awareness level is at the point where they're like, wow, I have childhood trauma. So that's the other problem is that when we have big generalized promises, a lot of the times we're not speaking to the awareness level of our audience. So the childhood trauma is a perfect one. There's, there, we all have issues with childhood trauma, but I'm not walking around saying, man, I, I have childhood trauma. But if there was an ad that said something along the lines of like, do you feel like you have to yell at your kids every day just get them to listen and you do it automatically without understanding why I'll be like, wow, that's me. I'm very curious. Yeah. Let me opt in. And then they can slowly reveal that it's childhood trauma. Um, they can also craft a webinar titled how to stop yelling at your kids or automatically yelling at your kids in order to get them to listen. And it's like, that's a very specific problem. It's a very specific promise. It's a very specific thing which is also super relevant to my exact problem and issue that I'm dealing with. And that speaks to the subconscious. Subconscious goes, wow, you're dealing with that. You actually have that problem. 
And so what happens is a lot of times when you have big generalized promises, you're not actually addressing specific problems that people are dealing with. And so again, big generalized promises can work if you have a big audience and it could work if you're, you don't have a lot of competition. So for me, there, there are messaging experts out there. There's not a ton of them. At least I'm not aware of a ton of different messaging experts. So I can usually put things like master your messaging and be okay for our big events. But I always have a subline, like how to, it's always master your messaging and create the most engaging content you've ever created. So I still have a very specific promise based off a very specific problem, which is your content's not getting engagement. So the bigger the audience and the less competitors you have, the more generalized you can be and get away with it. But for most of us, we're in a very competitive market. We have a lot of competitors. We can't get away with generalized promises. So we want to stop doing that. And we want titles that are based off of actual real problems. So one of our best PDF downloads over the last 12 months has been our 72 hour generator guide. It's gotten the lowest cost leads we've seen in a really long time. It's uh, produced a lot of sales for us in our evergreen process. It's just one of the best topics we've done in a really long time. And it stems from a problem of putting out content and not getting in one to follow your call to action. So it's a very clear promise how to create content that gets DMS within 72 hours. And what that allows me to do, the other beautiful part about getting, you know, creating themes or topics on a very specific problem is that you can be very generalized. You can be very, or sorry, you can be uh, very specific and dive, dive deep into that one topic but then it leaves so much meat on the bone for the offer. And that's one of the things I hear from people is like, well, Brandon, how do I teach without giving everything away? And it's like, well, just pick one specific problem that you solve. Like you probably solve 50 specific problems. Like for me, I can help people create a seven figure webinar. I can help you get content inside of DMS, but figuring out one content framework on how to get DMS in 72 hours does not give you profitable messaging. So I can teach this one specific thing, get very specific on it, very granular on it, help on a deep, deep level, but then say, look, what are you going to do besides this content? You still need thought reversals. You still need this. You still need that. You still need whatever. And we have a program that helps you do that. So although we gave you one thing today for the people that really want to master this through your entire brand, like book a call and let's, let's see if you're a right fit. And so that's one really easy way to be able to sell your program, sell your service, sell whatever it is but also add a ton of value inside of the funnel is that you just need to stop doing generalized topics and fi figure out what is one specific problem that I solve? What is the biggest problem they're dealing with? Let me start to help them fix it on a webinar. I'm going to use that in the title. I'm going to use that in the headline of the ad. I'm going to use that in the emails and, and all of that stuff. So again, just to give you one more example, I'll go back to the parenting one. If uh, I, I knew that I wanted to help parents have a better relationship with their kids, I would say, what's one big problem? Well, one big problem is, is that their kids won't listen. So they have to yell. And when they yell, they don't build connection. So instead of saying, um, you know, here's a webinar on how to be a better parent, it's how to stop yelling at your kids or how to reduce yelling at your kids 50% of the time. Um, and get them to listen the first time or something like that, right? You're going to craft these titles off of your best performing pieces of content or problems. So again, the title would be free workshop, how to get your kids to stop yelling at, or how to get your kids to listen without you yelling at them. Again, it's one specific promise, one specific thing. It's not generalized. It's very specific and it's come from a problem. Put that on the ad. I put that on the opt-in page. I put it on the emails and now we start having higher show up rates. I can have better teaching, teaching segments because I'm very specific. I can still create a lot of demand for my product. Okay. So that's number two. So just to recap, the first two problems were you have to reconvince someone to opt in on the opt-in page. And number two is that you use big generalized promises and titles, which can be okay if you're not in a very competitive saturated market and you have a big brand. But for most of us, you need to create things off of very specific titles and very specific promises. The next one, mistake number three to stop doing is stop changing the themes and the topics throughout your entire funnel. It drives me nuts when people do this. <laughs> it just, it's just insane. So, uh, you know, I probably shouldn't let it drive me nuts, but it, but it does. And here's what I mean by this is you, people change themes and wordings throughout a funnel. And you might have an ad that says something like how to lose 10 pounds. Okay. The opt-in page might say something like how to shave, how to shave off 10 pounds 
free webinar, how to shave off 10 pounds. And although to you, it may not seem like a big deal to go from how to lose 10 pounds, how to shave 10 pounds, it completely, completely changes things up. And the reason why is your audience is processing everything subconsciously. Your audience's subconscious is always on the guard, always trying to keep them safe, always on the defense. So when things aren't congruent, when things aren't familiar, when things are different, it's going to send red flags in and alarm bells. We also want to be as relevant as possible to our audience. So if we get someone to come into our funnel by saying how to lose 10 pounds, it means we were relevant to them. Now, if, if you change the language to how to shave 10 pounds, you might actually lose people because you're losing relevancy with that audience. Meaning that maybe they don't use the word shave off or maybe they just don't like the word shave. So they, you start to lose them. You start to become less relevant. So we want our messaging to be consistent through the entire funnel. Whatever you say in the beginning, you want to keep it the same. And then so what happens is people will do things like that. They'll say like, the ad, how to lose 10 pounds. The email will say how to lose 10 pounds. I'll opt into this webinar. And on the opt-in page, it says like, okay, we're about to show you how to shave off 10 pounds of your, your weight. And it's like, no, just keep it the same. And then on the webinar, they'll say things like, hey guys, today we're gonna teach you how to get rid of that fat that you don't want anymore. And it's like, how did we go from how to lose 10 pounds to shave 10 pounds to now it's we're saying how to get rid of fat? Like, why is the title of the webinar how to get rid of fat? Just keep it the same all the way through. So what happens is people start to, sh to change the themes, they change the topics, they change the wording. So the example I just gave you is a perfect example of changing the wording. But some people even change topics completely, which again is so like mind boggling. So it'd be something like how to lose 10 pounds as the ad, but then the webinar is called like how to get in shape. And it's like, it's not even the same thing. It's a complete, you change the topics completely. You have to remember whatever you say in the ad should come from the webinar. So you should know what the webinar title is. You should know what the, the messaging in the, in the webinar is going to be. You should know the problems. You should know the mistakes. We're going to look at our content and our past content to tell us what's working and what's not. We craft the webinar. The webinar becomes our nucleus. We take the title of the webinar. We put it in our ad. We take the problems and the mistakes in the webinar. We put it in our ad. Now we know our ad is connected to the webinar. Our opt-in page is just the bridge. Keep it completely the same. And now you have this nice, flawless, consistent funnel of messaging that started with the webinar, which started with your content, which started with uh, knowing what works. You put it into the webinar, then you craft your ad, then your opt-in page. And guess what? Everything is consistent. Instead, what most people do is they just treat everything as an individual sort of unit. The ad is its own thing. The opt-in page is its own thing. The emails are its own thing. The webinar is its own thing. And you're not taking into account, like, what did I say in the opt-in page? How does that go in the webinar? Or vice versa? Or nothing is, is connected. You have these individual efforts going on instead of one stream of, of flawless, consistent messaging all the way through. And it just works so well because if some, again, if someone is opting in or clicking on an ad or an email, you hit something. There's something that resonated with them. So just continue that, but go deeper with it the deeper they get into the funnel. So that's number three. Stop changing themes, stop changing topics. Number four is we, we talked about this earlier today on this episode, but you just have to stop teaching. Stop, well, let me re rephrase that. Stop teaching too much. And again, even with some of our one-on-one -on -one clients we've taken on recently, like the number one thing that they have, and they're all multiple six, seven figure entrepreneurs is they just teach too much in their launches. And what happens is when we teach too much, we, we risk a couple things. We risk overwhelming people and an overwhelmed person doesn't buy. We also risk tricking them into thinking they have everything they need. And the most important one is that we risk speaking outside of their awareness level. If we speak outside of their awareness level, that's usually too much teaching. Um, they, they, again, they won't buy because it doesn't, it isn't relevant to them. So let me give you an example here of what too much teaching looks like. And when I speak outside of the awareness level, so this, this happened about six years ago. And it was when I first kind of played around with messaging and started creating, like we, it was the video 4X effect back then. And we were playing around with it and I would use this. The messaging was about messaging, meaning that I would say things like, 
hey, your messaging is at the root cause of, of all your sales problems. And when we can change your messaging, you can start to get better, better results, lower cost ads, better per, uh, webinars. And here's what we want to do. We want to speak to the subconscious. We want to speak to the subconscious of your audience. And when you can speak to the subconscious of your audience, you, you start to talk about, you start to talk to the part of the brain that actually produces sales. So what we have to do is understand the subconscious. And people are like, what the hell are you talking about, Brandon? Like, I don't, I just, I don't want any of that. Again, this was six years ago. No one knew what messaging was. No one talked about subconscious communication and marketing. No one was aware that messaging was the cause of a lot of their sales problems. And so it didn't land. And so I started to go and think about this and start to think like, okay, well, how do I teach less and be relevant to my audience, but still add value? And so now my language started to change. I started to go, what are the problems that they're dealing with? Okay, because of messaging issues, they have content that's not getting seen. They have webinars that have lower show up rates. Their conversion rates aren't very high. Their cost per lead is going up. So I started to say things like, hey, um, are, if you're posting content and you're not getting any traction, even though it's gold, there's a couple reasons why. And the first reason why you're teaching gold, but no one's really paying attention is because you're speaking too, uh, too deep too soon. And you are probably teaching too much and you're not doing things like Gary Vaynerchuk or Grant Cardone or Brene Brown do. They don't do how to content and you're just doing how to content all the time. So my whole method of communication is basically talking and starting at their problem. And then I use the counter examples of like Gary Vaynerchuk, Brene Brown to go like, oh my gosh, I am doing that. I am speaking too much and they aren't doing that. Then I can bridge the gap to what does Brene Brown do and what does Gary Vaynerchuk do very well? Well, they're very intentional with their communication. Their communication starts with problems. It starts with this. It starts with that. It starts with blah, 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 blah. It starts with beliefs. It starts. And then what they do is they go to and do this and they do this. And that's what we call messaging. So instead of starting with messaging, I'm starting with the problem and I'm bringing people to where I need them to be. I'm moving their awareness the deeper I go into that, into the funnel. But what a lot of people do is they just teach too much. And it's like you're, you're speaking too much from textbook, from knowledge, and you're not speaking in a, a, a way of relevancy. So you're not speaking to the awareness level of your audience. So some of the things that we want to do um, there's a couple ways to do this. So when we get into the funnel or the training or the webinar, there's two, two, two things that I would recommend doing. Cause when people hear me say this, they hear, hear me say, well, Brandon, if I'm not going to be teaching all the time, what do I do? And look, we still want to teach, but we want to do other things at the same time. So method number one of what to do instead of just teaching and teaching and teaching, going too deep, too deep, too deep, too deep is stop trying to teach them how to do something, but teach them more of the pathway of what, how to get to the end, end goal. And what I mean by that is instead of like doing a webinar and teaching you everything on messaging, I just have to teach you the pathway to successful messaging. Or if you are a weight loss coach, you don't need to teach them how to lose weight on the webinar. You need to teach them the path to losing weight. And when you teach the pathway, it is incredibly value adding because they don't know the pathway. They don't know what it's going to look like. They don't know the mistakes. They don't know what things to avoid. They don't know what things to go do or what the path's going to look like. And so when you paint the path, it's a great way of adding value, allowing them to see, okay, this is what I need to do, but you don't teach any of the how, and that's where your program comes in. That's where your service comes in. So I always imagine teaching a pathway to the end result. So instead of coming on to a webinar and just teaching the nuts and bolts about messaging, which would take me forever to do, probably overwhelm people, it'd be way too much information, I just teach a pathway of what to do. And that's kind of what even what I'm doing in this, this episode today is there's a pathway. You kind of know what to do. You know that, okay, I should talk about the problems first. I should be completely relevant first. I should have very specific uh, promises but you, I never walked you through how to do that. I never told you how to describe a problem or how to find the best problems or, or how to turn a problem into a title. I never showed you any of that stuff. I never showed you how to be hyper relevant, what language patterns and frameworks to use. I didn't teach you how to do any of that. That's what a program does. 
But even on today's episode, you start to see a pathway of what you need to do in order to get the result that you want. So that's method number one. So instead of diving way deep into content, 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 just paint the picture of the pathway. Use counterexamples, use metaphors, use analogies as you teach the pathway as well. Now, the second thing you can do, and again, this, the, which route you take on the teaching side of this or the educational side completely depends on the promise of your webinar title. So let's say your sales mechanism, your webinar, your challenge, or your video series, or your three day live event. Let's say that you decided, Brandon, I'm just going to do a very generalized topic. I, I am not a saturated niche. I have a great organic audience. I'm going to go very generalized. That's great. In that webinar, just show the pathway, teach them the pathway that you don't need to get specific on anything. However, if you're going to go the route of Brandon, I'm going to pick a very specific problem, very specific promise, a very specific title. You want to use this method here. Okay. You actually want to show them one or two things of what they can do, and it should be actionable. What I mean by that is like, I'm just going to use a perfect example is the webinar that we do every week. It's called how to generate DMS from your content in 72 hours. It's a very specific promise from a very specific problem. And instead of painting a pathway of what to do, what I'm doing is I'm showing you a very specific framework, just one that you can follow to get DMS from your content. So because the title is specific, I also want my teaching to be specific, but you have to understand this, this thing that I'm teaching, how to get DMS from content. It is a tiny sliver of what I do in my program. It is like a half of a percent of what I do inside of my program. So because it's so small, because it's so specific, because it's so granular, I can get specific on my teaching on that one thing without overwhelming my audience because it's just one framework. It's one thing. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. There's two types of ways to create the titles or the themes. You can have a very generalized if you are not in a saturated market or, and if you do, you want to teach the pathway of how to, you know, like change that or, or get the result of that very bit generalized topic. You don't want to get green. You can't get green. You can't go through everything. And so if you're going to teach an overview of everything that you do and have a very generalized title, cause you're not in a very saturated market, mm -hmm. then just teach them the pathway that they need to follow. That's it. That's all you got to do. But if you're like most of us, you're going to have to pick a very specific problem with a very specific promise. And you're going to want to give them one specific actionable thing to do. And that way you get deep, you add value, you give them something to do, but you don't overwhelm them at the, at the same time. And I'm going to give you one little insider trick here. One thing I like to do is I tell people, if you take action on the thing I'm going to teach you today and you get a result, DM me, I have something else for you. So what starts to happen is if they take action on the information in the webinar, they start to get a result with the webinar. They start to DM you or message you like, Hey, Brandon, I, I did what you told me. I got DMS. Can I have those extra videos? So what I always do on those webinars is I say, guys, if you take action on today's webinar, DM me, I have three more training videos. that are going to show you how to do the next step. And so now what I do is I start getting all these people who listened to my, my training, took action on it, got a result. And now I can actually open up a sales conversation with them. Like, Hey, you got results. Now what happens? You know, here's the three videos, but what if we were able to do this for your entire brand? Would you want to hop on a call real quick and just see if you're someone we can help, like get lower ad costs, engaging content, higher sales um, on your webinars. Do you want that? Okay, cool. Let's book a call right? So we can get very granular on those things. Now, if you go that route, if you decide to do your teaching to be very specific and very granular like that, we have to do something. You have to show them where in your process that training fits. So for example, inside of NGM plus, we have three phases that we bring people through to figure out their messaging, figure out their sales, figure out their ads and all that stuff. There's three phases we go through. So when I teach people how to get DMS from content and I teach that framework, one of our frameworks, I will show them, look, you're here because you have broken messaging. You likely have this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem. There are three phases that you need to go through in order to get your messaging fixed. There's this phase. And when you have this phase dialed in, you're going to end this problem, this problem, this problem. You're going to get this benefit, this benefit, this, this benefit. Phase number two, you're going to have that. Yeah. And this problem's going to end. This problem's going to end. And you're going to get this benefit, this benefit. And then phase number three is this problem's going to end. This problem's going to end. And you're going to get this benefit, this benefit. 
And I go through that and I say, when these three are dialed in, you're going to have profitable messaging throughout your entire brand. Now, what I'm about to teach you is the first step of phase number one. It is the very first step in it. You cannot overuse it. You cannot do it. You have to integrate all of these phases to have profitable messaging. But if you do it right, you will get some DMs. But it is the very first sliver, very first step of phase number one. And phase number one has five different steps. All right, let's dive in. So now what I did is because I'm very granular, I showed them where in the process that that one small little teaching fits, which now allows me to position the pitch very well because now when I'm done, I teach it to them and I say, now just as a reminder, this will help you get X, Y, and Z. But if you're still dealing with this problem, this problem, this problem, we have to bring you through these three phases. And then I could even throw in some testimonials. This person did it. This person did it. This person did it. This is what they got. This is what they got. This is what they got. Now, for those of you who are interested in dialing in, not only what we went over today, but are also interested in dialing in everything and experiencing these benefits, book a call, schedule a call with us. And so again, if you're going to go route number two on your teaching, get very specific and granular with the topic, with the theme, with the teachings, you need to be able to show where those teachings fit into your entire process and get people sold on the entire process in order to transition to the pitch. Okay. So that's number four. So let's recap where we're at. Number one mistake is you try to reconvince people on the opt-in page to opt-in. You don't need to do that. Number two is you have big generalized promises in a very saturated market where you should be a little bit more granular. Number three is you change themes, topics, or wording throughout your funnel. Number four is you do too much teaching. In order to fix that, if you're going to do a very generalized topic, then have a very generalized webinar, but you should be teaching the pathway, not how to do it. If you're going to go very granular with your, with your topics and your themes, then you want to pick one granular specific thing to teach, but you have to show them where in the entire process that it fits and get them sold on the entire process. The number five mistake that people make is they create messaging that is not based off of testing. And this is something we started doing pretty recently. So the topic that we chose, you know, the 72 hour DM guide, all I did was looked at the past year of podcast episodes and I said, what was our biggest podcast episode? What, which one got the most downloads and most traction, most DMs and messages and things like that, shares and stuff like that. And it's like, wow, this is a topic. So I'm like, let's create a PDF on it. Let's create ads around it. And guess what? It was our lowest cost lead that we've had in like five years. We were getting leads for like four or five bucks. And it was based off of testing. So I look at all my content, all my messaging, all of my podcast episodes, as tests, tests just to see what's working. Let me do a, an episode on this problem. Let me see if this problem resonates with people. Let me do it on this topic here and this over here. And we just look at the testing and the data to tell us. And here's why this is so important. You have to understand that your audience is making subconscious decisions every step of your funnel. Whether they realize it or not, whether you realize it or not, that is exactly what's happening. We always heard that people make 95% of their business, their buying decisions subconsciously. So the decision to buy is already done, made before they even see your pitch. And it's the same thing with you. Like when you scroll Instagram or Facebook or whatever it may be, TikTok, and a piece of content pops up, you're not making a logical decision to keep on swiping or to uh, listen or to click on it. It's an automated, automatic decision. And what starts to happen is when you're scrolling like, like Facebook, for example, and someone says something that's so relevant to you, your subconscious will tell you like, pay attention, stop the scroll. Let's see what they have to say. And that's automated. It's, there's no logic in that. You're not sitting there going like, should I list on this? What's the benefit I might get? What? No, you're not doing any of that. You're just like, huh, click. And then let's say that click takes you to a video and you're watching the video. You make an automated decision to stay or to go. And that usually shows up in the form of, wow, this is really interesting, or this is blowing my mind, or this is bored. But those emotions, those thoughts are automatic. You're not logically thinking about it. And your audience is doing the same thing for you. So if your ads aren't working, it's because your language, the copy, the messaging that you're using doesn't speak to the subconscious of your audience. It's not relevant to them. They don't see why, how this applies to them, and they don't see why they should click. 
it could be the topic is off. It could be the, the communication is off. It could be that the copy's off. It could be whatever, you, right? You, maybe you don't have the subconscious triggers like using the right subconscious triggers like identity or, or pain point or the right sort of specific benefit or whatever it may be. And so what people do is even when you listen to this podcast episode, people go like, okay, I need to add in like a pain point or a specific topic or a specific theme, or I need to get specific on something, or I need to speak in their awareness. But even, even though that will help you, most people will walk away from this episode and go like, let me just guess at it. Like that may not be your thought, but that's what you're going to do. You're not going to sit there and go like, well, I'm just going to guess at this, but you do. You just go like, okay, I need to get specific. Let me just think here. Let me think, think, think. Ah, let me get specific. Yeah, let me, let me talk about this pain point or let me get specific on this problem. And although you're specific, you're still guessing. You have no idea if that topic's going to work. You have no idea if that problem or that mistake is relevant to your audience. If I'm going to go and put all this energy into a launch, into a building out a funnel, I don't want to guess at anything. I want to know what's going to work before I do it. And that's why your content is so important. And this is why when I see people procrastinating on their content or trying to get it just right or just perfect before they post, like all you're doing is just do a massive disservice to yourself. You should post as much as you can, as fast as you can, especially in the beginning, so you can learn as much as you can. And we don't want to guess at anything. We literally want the behavior of our audience to tell us what's working. And that's why your content's a test because you put it out there and you just look at what's getting the most likes, what's getting the most watch time, what's getting the most downloads. And then we, we can use that data to make more educated decisions on what do we put in the ads and what do we put on over here and what do we, and we just know. You know, we're working with a client right now and some of the problems they solve is, is they, they, or some of the things they do is they help you with sales, they help you with um, team structure, systems, process, they help you with hiring a team. And I'm like, well, which one is resonating with the audience most? And I'm like, I don't know. So I'm like, okay, great. Let's put out some content all around team, some around all about systems and processes, all around sales. Let's try different revenue levels. Let's say 75,000 a year on this one. Let's say 10,000 a month on this one. Let's see, like, is it sales? And then when it is sales, does it do better when we say 75,000 a year? Or is it better when we say 10,000 a month? Or what, which one works better? Let's just let the data tell us. And then we just take all that data and we just plug it into our ad frameworks and our webinar frameworks and our content frameworks. And guess what? More often than not, stuff works the very first time. Okay? So stop guessing at your messaging and start testing and base a lot of your messaging off testing. So these are the five funnel messaging mistakes. Number one, just to recap, stop convincing people to opt in once on your opt-in page. Just keep it consistent. Number two, uh, do not give big generalized promise promises unless you have a big audience or you are in an unsaturated market. Number three is to stop changing themes and topics or wording throughout your funnel. Keep it consistent. You get, should base that off of testing also. Um, number four is stop teaching so much. So if you do have a generalized topic, you can teach the pathway to the result. And if you have a very specific problem-based uh, and, and very specific promise-based webinar, you can just reveal one or two things, go deep on them, but then show where in the process that that fits so they know there is a bigger process that can solve bigger problems for them. And then number five is stop guessing at the messaging and start basing it off of testing. So if you love this episode, let me know. Send me a message on Instagram. Leave us a review on iTunes and I will see you all next week for another episode. Take care, everyone. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, go below, hit the subscribe button and make sure you click on that bell icon and get notified every time we drop a new episode. Now, if you're looking for the show notes, we have them linked underneath this video as well as our social media handles and some links to free training and offers that we drop from time to time to help you guys even further. So go check those out if you're interested and thank you so much for tuning in to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast.